Hello everyone and welcome to Joy Sparking. Um, today's video I'm going to be doing a basic overview of Autodesk Sketchbook. I'll be using my Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite and for today's video I figured it would be a little bit easier if I was doing a voiceover as opposed to doing subtitles on the screen so you can listen and watch instead of trying to read the subtitles and watch at the same time. So I'm just going to get started by getting a pointer on here so that you can see a little bit better instead of using this little tiny pointer that's really hard to see. <laughs> So today I want to start by talking about this upper bar. I'll go over the left side here, which has the different brush settings. And then there's a little bottom setting dial thing. There's that little puck up in the left hand corner. And then on the right side where all the layers and stuff is, then I'll, I'll go over everything else. But I first want to start with the upper bar where most of my tool function work happens. <laughs> So I would like to start off first talking about the selection tool. Um, there are a few different things with the selection tool. Uh, let me get some shapes up here first. So with the selection tool, the first one here is the lasso tool. And the lasso allows you to create a customized selection area. If you want to move that selection area, you use this nudge button and that will move the selection area, not what is within the area. You'll have to use the move tool for that. Then you invert the selection and it'll choose everything outside of what is what you drew your selection around. And you can deselect here, then you can come to the rectangle selection tool and that will make a rectangular selection. And if you want to move what's in the selection, you use that transform moving tool and it'll transform what is selected within the selection. Uh, you can transform with a distortion. You can use another nudge tool, which will move it around. You can flip it horizontally and vertically and also rotate it with the rotate buttons. And it just allows you to do different things. If you're wanting to move everything that's on the layer, you would just deselect and then use the transform tool and it will transform everything that is on the layer. And of course, if you don't want that, then you would just select what you would like to transform. Then you have your undo redo buttons, which are pretty straightforward. Uh, the fill tool, you have just a plain fill, which looks like that solid fill. Then there's a linear fill, which looks like this. And if you want to change the colors, you just select the circle that the color is corresponding to and then use either one of those color pickers and change it to the color that you want it to look like. And then you just go to the next circle and you choose the next color that you want it to look like. And that it's really easy to just change those. It's not pretty, pretty straightforward again. <laughs> Uh, there's also the radial, which is a lot like the linear tool, and it's just a circular look. It's not hard. Again, you can just change it by selecting the corresponding circle and changing the color. Then you have the guide tools, which are rulers that will uh, help you keep your lines straight and cohesive. And I'll demonstrate that here. It won't draw on anything outside of the line. So I could try to draw as far from the ruler as I wanted, but it, it still wouldn't draw anywhere except along the sides of that ruler, which 
can be beneficial depending on the type of work you're working on. There's also this curved ruler and it's the same principles. It will only draw along those guides. Uh, you can move the points on this one. There's also an ellipse guide which you make it circular, you can make it oblong, it's kind of just whatever you want it to be I guess. <laughs> Then we have the symmetry tool, and I'll clear this off so I can show you. There's different ways of using the symmetry tool. So the first one is a vertical symmetry, and then the second option has horizontal symmetry, and you can use both of them at once to have vertical and horizontal like this, or you could have them separate. Then there is a radial symmetry, and you can adjust the amount of sections that there are and it gets all squiggly. <laughs> uh, you can lock it into place, you can turn off the guide views, but yeah, there's that. Then you have shapes, circle, square, line, in case you needed anything like that. My favorite tool is the predictive stroke. I use it a lot and it helps kind of just smooth out the lines. That's without predictive stroke on. This is with a level one, a level two, level three, level four, level five. And you can see how that just adjusts and makes it a lot more smooth and more cohesive. I usually keep it about a three and that's that's about where I like it. <laughs> it doesn't adjust things too much, but it's I use that tool the most, definitely. Then there's this import image. It's if you want, you can import images to use to color over. Here's perspective guides, one point perspective. You can customize how the grid looks. You can make it infinite or finite and that helps it be boxy or unboxy so you have an actual point. There's your two perspective, two point perspective. You can change the density and the opacity of the lines. The density really just plays with how many lines you're seeing, how many guidelines you're seeing pretty much. Then there's three point and you can adjust all the points, lock them into place, you know, The last one here really is the text tool and you just put in the text, you can adjust the kind of the font. I don't have really any cool fonts loaded so I don't have really cool ones to show you. You can change the color, you can distort it, do all the things you could with the move tool. You can also use this little video up here, this video button is a time lapse button and it will record a time lapse of what you're drawing which can come in handy depending on if you're wanting to record time lapses. This is the brush settings and tools and there's a whole library filled with a bunch of different textures, uh, synthetic brushes, um, topics, it's, it's got some really neat utility to it and there's a lot of different brushes to mess around with. This little puck you can change your brush with as well, as well as change colors. You can bring different brushes into your toolbar by dragging them in and out. If you have some that you use more than others or that you want to just keep really handy for you. You can change the settings here, and some of them will have more advanced settings to go through. This little button at the bottom, it'll give you five little tools that are pretty useful, but before I get into that, I want to show you this puck. You can change the size of 
your tools with these little slide bars and the puck, you can move up and down and left and right to change luminance and saturation levels. Uh, I keep saying opacity. They refer to it as density, but density and opacity is pretty much the same thing here. These five little tools will let you flip the canvas, toggle the little puck up in the left hand corner on and off, uh, your last brush, your color picker, and a colorless brush. Um, depending on your needs, I usually have the, to the puck toggled on and the little bar at the bottom, the little five tool ring, you can swipe up really quick and it'll take you to color picker because color picker is at the top. You can also access color picker in the color wheels. Um, but anyway, let's move on to layers. Uh, this is where you can see the different layers you have. There's always a background layer. You can make it visible or not visible, but there will always be a background layer. Um, and you can mess with that once you've finished with the drawing. You can save it with or without the background, and that's kind of up to you. It just depends, you know, what you're doing, what your needs are. Uh, so on this first layer above the background, I'm making some drawings, and then I'm going to make a new layer and draw over that. And anything I draw on that new layer is not going to affect the layer with the orange because they're on completely separate layers. So if I want to erase something on the orange layer, I'd have to click on the layer, get my eraser, and then it would only erase what is associated with that layer. Um, so it's not going to affect anything of the blue because the blue is on the top layer. It's not associated with the orange at all. And if I want to erase the blue, I would have to click on the layer that has the blue, and then I could erase what is on that layer, which is really nice if you're trying to keep things separate and not overlay them. You can mess around with uh, the different settings that go with layers. So you have your copy, your cut, you can paste, you can duplicate, delete, merge, all, merge. And if you click the merge button, it'll bring it down, it'll merge two layers together. So the top layer will merge with the layer beneath it. And because of that, I can now mess with these color balances and the hue, saturation, luminance adjustments. And that's what's making all these weird color changes. And you just kind of have to mess around with that. It really depends on what you're working on, if you would use those or not. Then you have different blending modes and uh, let's, let's clear that out really quick. Let me show this a little better. get a new layer and I'll do this reddish orange color on top of that. Now I'm going to change the blend mode to darken and it takes on a darker color of the one on the bottom and it, again it really depends on what you're going for when you would use these types of blending modes. They could honestly use a whole video by themselves because there's so much that you can do with them. But I'll just, you know, I'm just going through showing you what each one looks like. But, yeah. It... Kind of just a case-by-case -case thing, I guess. <laughs> you can lock the layers, which locks the pixels. It's an alpha lock, so it locks the pixels that are active on the layer. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, 
there's this minimal UI view which just kind of gets everything out of the way. You still have your density, your opacity, um, your size of brush and stuff. Then you have your little menu tool and that will bring you to a new sketch, gallery, share, you can go through preferences, um, just kind of stuff like that. But yeah, that's kind of just the basic overview. I hope that helped and you learned something from this. Anyway, yeah, that's all for today's video. Leave some feedback below in the comments. I live off of that. This is why I made this video is because someone request, requested it and it, it helps me figure out what you would like to see and what is helping you the most. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Again, for the fifth time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.